Uh, hi, I'm Madonna. I'm your worst nightmare. To rule the world. Why don't you show them what you do, honey? You've never had more fun with anyone else. People, people, we've got to move on to the next song. Somewhere I'm between. sweet and I'm a bitch, you know what I mean? And that's always been the way it is. I'm, the, I'm a human being. <laughs> I'm waiting. Hi, this is Sarah Hudson. And you're listening to MLVC, the Madonna podcast. Hey guys, it's Tony, and there's nothing wrong with it being that you want me. And hey everybody, I'm Stefan. Welcome to another episode of MLVC, the Madonna podcast, your place for all things Madonna Louise Veronica Ciccone. And this week on the podcast, we are happy to welcome Grammy-nominated songwriter, terrorist and podcaster sarah hudson to the show sarah welcome hi thank hey sarah you. welcome i'm so excited to be here anything i can do to talk about madonna i'm here i'm ready <laughs> well you came to the right place yeah <laughs> yes how are you doing in la today on this auspicious monday <laughs> I'm good. You know, I'm definitely like, I'm sure everybody else ready for this to be over. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm ready to go out, back out and like live my life, but you know, I'm good. I'm staying positive and just trying to, you know, fill up my spirit. With- well, you've been doing some dog walking. I've seen. I saw that fancy robe you were wearing the other day. And uh- oh, I definitely have. I do my dog my dog walks every morning and go on my rants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said you were you're unveiling a new look today. I think I am. I I was supposed to do it this morning, but I woke up too late. But I'm going to unveil my new robe. It's a very, oh. very special robe. <laughs> well, um, uh, before we jump into the rest of the podcast, I just wanted to give all of our <laughs> listeners a little bit of an intro on the prolific career that you have. So in case you don't know who Sarah Hudson is, she is an artist, songwriter, social producer who has worked with some of the biggest names in the music industry. She co-wrote Dark Horse for Katy Perry, as well as nine tracks on K-Pair's album Witness, including Swish Swish. Other artists she's written for include Camila Cabello, Iggy Azalea, Adam Lambert, Ariana Grande, Nicki Minaj, Justin Bieber, Years and Years, Adina Menzel, Charlie XCX, just to name a few. And most recently, our listeners have probably been bopping along in quarantine to Sarah's most recent project, which was Dua Lipa's album, Future Nostalgia. So, you know, just a couple of small people. <laughs> just yes. a few just a few pop stars. You well, know, just right. a couple of us. Were- uh, you know, struggling singer songwriter. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, whenever I hear all that back, I'm always like, whoa, that's cool. <laughs> and that just happened overnight, right? You just rolled out of bed one day and were like, I'm going to yeah. write music. Yeah. Super easy. <laughs> no, well, um, what's great about your work, though, is that you, you kind of hit all, you know, you kind of touch all bases. Um, you know, like for example, you wrote "Expensive" for Erica Jane, so you're known by everyone that watches Bravo. But then you right. work with Paris, so you get a lot of like, you know, people that are into his music. And you know, then you go full pop, and you know, then back, you know, to more singer songwriter work. And I just love it. It's just everywhere. thank you. Yeah, thanks. It's been quite a journey, but. You know, I'm just so, so, so obsessed with pop music and been such a lover of pop music my whole life. So when I get to make the extra pop kind of stuff, then my heart is just full, you know? (laughs) That's when your soul soars. Oh, it really does. It really does. Well, so before we start questioning uh, Sarah about her illustrious career, can we, Tony, can we do a little This Week in Chaconi? Yeah, apparently uh, she's been busy the last. Yes, I. Uh, of weeks. I was. Sh- I think everyone. I saw a page six article about it. So apparently, that it rocked the, the the media when Madame X in her quarantine diary announced that she has the COVID antibodies. I mean, she's ready to get in a car and breathe in the COVID air. That's a direct Madonna quote, but. 
I just read this morning that she was at a party with people. Is well, that allowed? So, uh, yeah, Sarah, I don't know if you pay attention to Madonna's Instagram as, of course. as fervidly as we do, but <laughs> yeah. um, yes, she was actually, I, I heard the clarification, Tony, Madonna attended Stephen Klein, the photographer's birthday party, but it was not a party. It was just literally his house in the Hamptons and there was four people there. So I guess that means she's back in the United States. Yes, I know. I guess she flew. But um, Where has she been quarantining? In Lisbon or in London? I I feel like she was in Lisbon for the first couple of weeks, and then she went to London. Okay. Because that's where her her son, her her children are. Right. And then now it seems like- I think she's at the Hamptons now. Yeah, so they must have uh they must have taken a slow boat across the Atlantic. <laughs> right. yeah. Oh my god. Madonna, I'm just Madonna, trying to think of the safest way to transport. Yeah, her quarantine doesn't look like the rest of us. She still travels. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not like the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. She uh, well, but I you know what? It was interesting that she announced that she had the COVID antibodies because I'm assuming that means she caught the virus at some point. And I remember people saying on the last couple shows of her Madame X tour in Paris that she was fighting off a cold. And I, I guarantee that that's probably when she had it. So good for her. See, some people are, you know, t- they're, they're sleeping off the virus and Madonna's performing God control. And she's, <laughs> she's singing and dancing it away. Exactly. Did you see Madame X, Sarah? I, I did. Oh my God, I did. I at saw the it. Turn? Yep, at the will turn. And the, the most amazing, this is my... Most amazing um, encounter with her because I went with Katy Perry, so mm-hmm. we got to go. As we know, all do, yeah, you know, just a simple like friend <laughs> hangout. No, we so we got to go backstage before the oh, show, and we yes. joined her prayer circle. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And I have a tattoo of her from Truth or Dare. And it says, um, do something else. Do my eyebrows. <gasps> That's Tony's, my line. Tony's favorite <laughs> quote from that movie. <laughs> it's my favorite line. And I had to just get it tattooed with a drawing of her. And and Katie was like, um, Madonna is, you know, this is Sarah, like she writes songs with me, blah, blah, blah. And, and she has a tattoo of you. And, and she, and I showed her the tattoo and she grabbed my arm, yes. looked at the tattoo and she goes, that's amazing. And then that was it. And that, and that was, I've had like five or six or f- around five like encounters with her. And that was just the one that was, I have to tell you the most mm-hmm. like magical. That's that's amazing. I'll tell you oh, about the God. other ones, but they were they were oh, all yeah. well, very very quick and you know we'll get to well, that. You do know, so we had um, artist uh, sketch artist Justin Teodoro, who's based in New York. He does a lot of Madonna sketches as part of his work. Oh, and he did a drawing of that exact moment in Truth or Dare with "Do something else, do my eyebrows," and turned it into a T-shirt. I wonder if that's. The tattoo, I, if it's his art, because I found it on this other artist. Um, his name's like um, McMillan Kid uh, on mm-hmm. Instagram. He draws the cutest things of like, you know, Meryl Streep and Madonna and all these sort of gay icons. And I saw it on his page, but he told me that it was an original drawing from someone else. So maybe it's this guy. Oh, I bet saying. you it is. Hmm, yeah, we'll yeah, I'm going mean, to look it up. We'll compare it and uh, we'll see if we can try to get you one of those shirts because. Uh, oh my God. I would. I just, think you need to have one. I <laughs> need, it's my favorite line. I mean, I had to get it tattooed on my body. That's I mean, how I much know, I, me too. I I'm say surprised it all Tony the time. hasn't. Tony says it used to say it all the time on the podcast. And, oh, uh, I, I say it like at least three times a day to unsuspecting <laughs> people. Uh, I know? just love it. Do something else. Do my eyebrows. Yeah. It's like, come on. Uh, so. And then, you know, what else was happening last week is that the fans came out in full force and hashtag justice for bedtime stories. It went to number one last Thursday on the iTunes uh, US. Finally, enough start. love for bedtime stories. Insane. I, mean, I love that. I know now, people were people were asking, how did this happen? Why did this happen? And I yeah, was like, well, why did it happen? So 
the album was on sale on iTunes for four ninety nine, and one of the big Madonna Twitter Instagram accounts just started to say, "Let's get this to number one, like the Mariah Carey fans did for E equals M C squared the other week," and just everyone sort of hopped on board and rallied and just started buying it up and. Wow. And, and then it, yeah, yeah, it went to number one, which I was shocked it hadn't gone to number one when it first came out in 1994. I mean, yeah, that's I insane. don't, I don't know offhand who blocked her, but somebody was there for number one for a while. Um, mm. Oh, probably sure. Boys to Men or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think course. Boys to Men was out when she did the the making of the Truth or Dare, not Truth or Dare, the making of the Take a Bow video. And, no bull. Yes, exactly. And <laughs> Kurt Loder was like, Kurt Loder was like, well, maybe you can get a number one with Take a Bow if Boys to Men will give you some space. And she's like, oh, is that, are they still on the charts? Yeah. Uh-huh. Cut, cut, cut. 25 years and here we are yeah right, so i thought exactly. that was pretty amazing i think and she acknowledged it so glad that someone told her that you know <laughs> that, oh hey your album 26 years later went to number one and well that you know she, she she was a uh, preoccupied because she also had uh remixes for i don't search i find that released <sighs> that night at midnight i know there's some really good remixes in there guys you have to i have to check it out i haven't i haven't listened yet tony what's your favorite you love that the 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 q remix it's k-u-e um this dj i've suddenly become his biggest fan and he's he's great um it just takes you down disco road and you know that's yes that's all i need right now i'm Uh, still on board with the offer nissim remix because that's just like Oh, oh yeah, that's a, like, it's like a trance K hole in audio form, you know? Like No, that's a that. great one. <laughs> it's like being in the the biggest the biggest club in the world and it's just like just thundering. That's yeah, it reminds me of the days when I used to go clubbing at Tunnel, R. I. P. Mm-hmm. Tunnel in uh in New York City and just get like lost in that cavernous club and that's exactly yes. what I wanna hear. And Limelight, remember Limelight? Oh, oh yeah, good that was my first gay club. <laughs> ah. But yeah, the the I don't search I find remixes are no slouches themselves. They were the last time I checked yesterday. I think they were up to number eleven on the iTunes chart. So yeah, they, I think they broke the Madonna. top ten and then they dropped out. But mm-hmm. I think it's because everything was you know New Music Friday. It's a right. little congested. And then American so. Life was in like number twelve on Friday. I was like, what is wow. going on here? Yeah. Honestly, American Life is one of my favorite al- Madonna albums. Mm-hmm. Like so underrated, I think, and just like I, it's just amazing. I mean, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, I feel like it's finally getting its due. People are really speaking up about it, and you know, really focusing on what the content of the album was about, as opposed to what was going on in the zeitgeist at the time. You know, right, right. Yeah, they weren't ready for that when it came out. They it were was, not ready for that. It was a little mm-hmm. too, a little too in their face. I think when it first came out, and they were, they, I think they wanted, you know, holiday. And right. they, they were getting Madonna cursing at them saying, what, what are you doing? So, you know, right. And, and as we all know, if Madonna curses at you, it's, you know, it's a little intimidating, you know? <laughs> so, um, well, now it's time to focus on Sarah Hudson. Sarah Hudson. <laughs> oh my God, me? Yes, you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. where do we start, Stefan? I mean, there's so much to cover. There is. There's a, um, let's start at the very beginning. Ah, oh, it's a good place okay. to start. Yeah. How did you get your start in the music industry, Sarah? Well, a long story short it for you, but I come from sort of a musical entertainment family. Um, you know, my dad is in the, was in the music business and I just kind of grew up around it and bringing Madonna in. Um, I, the re the way that I first discovered her was well knew about her was my dad, um, saying he he was in a group in the seventies and then he went into doing you know his own music and then started producing and songwriting and all that and mm-hmm. in the eighties he was working under this producer who was producing the Vision Quest soundtrack nice. 
Uh And he, my dad was kind of just there doing, you know, like learning from him, doing background vocals, that kind of thing. And he ended up singing the backgrounds on um, Crazy For You and Gambler. (gasps) No way. I I know. It's insane. It's insane. (laughs) And so he, I was like, I must have been, I don't even know, five or like something. I, I I don't know what year that was. I don't know if you guys. It was 1985. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, so. no. Well, I thought Vision Quest was earlier than 85. Was it 85? No, the movie came out in 85, but everything was done like in late 84. Like the song came out. Yeah. Late 84. Yeah. Late 84. Okay. And when was the first tour, the Virgin tour? Or the... That was 85. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was literally like four years old, five years old. My dad comes home with all these black rubber bracelets and these two scarves. And he's like, Oh, I just worked with this artist, Madonna saying backgrounds here and gave them to me when I was like five. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no idea what this is, but like, that was my first sort of moment. Right. And then I discovered her and from such an early age, I mean, from that time and whatever, I'm getting back to my story, but she was just like my everything of like Mm -hmm. music icon. I was like, Oh my God, this is what I like want to be. I want to do this. I'm obsessed (laughs) with her. Like she was just my everything, my reason anyway. So back to me. So I just am singing, you know, dancing my whole life, started writing songs when I was like a teenager. And then I never had any question that I wanted to do anything else. I wanted to be a pop star. I wanted to be Madonna basically. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) so literally like I, that's what I wanted to do. So after high school, I, you know, just kind of went doing my own shows in LA, like just really just kind of figuring it out and went to Musicians Institute for a second and just trying to figure out how do I become a pop star. Anyway, long story (laughs) short, I met a woman who was a publisher, music publisher. She loved me and loved like my weird little songs. She ended up signing me as an artist and she's like, I'm going to get your record deal. She set me up with all these other songwriters. I wrote a bunch of songs, blah, blah, blah. Literally long story short. Um, got signed to a major label when I was like 21 or around there, um, moved to New York, made this crazy album for like trillions of dollars. Like they were putting all this money into my project. Like, I'm like, this is it. I'm going to be Madonna. This is my moment. (laughs) I've made it. I've made made it. it. (laughs) Literally. I'm like, this is it. It's happening. Like whatever. So that was like three or four years making this album right before the album was supposed to come out. The president left the label and I ended up getting dropped. Oh no. So devastating. I mean, my, I was like, my life's over. This is it. Like, what the fuck do I do? Oh, can I swear? I can swear, right? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so it's a Madonna, so, it's a Madonna podcast. So right, can, right, right. I forgot where I was for a second. <laughs> so, so then you know, I was just like, "Fuck this business! Like, fuck it all! I'm gonna just do my own thing, like, I'm on my own way." Ended up uh, starting this band uh, called Ultraviolet Sound. We like. Mm-hmm. At the time when we started it, there was really no music. Like it was electro, underground-y, rap-y, like Kesha rap style, like Gaga vibes. Like no one was really doing that at the time. So we were very sort of like underground. We had like this cult following and, Mm -hmm. you know, toured and literally did that for five, six years. We played with Gaga. We played with like Katy Perry. That's actually how I met Katy. Like we played, you know, we did a ton of shows and we had a buzz, but we never really broke through the, to the next Mm -hmm. level. Um, but through the experience, I mean, and I was, we were dead broke, just living in our studio, no shower, like barely baby wipe, baby wipe showers. Kind of like Madonna. (laughs) Literally. Like we were really just, you know, suffering for our art and like doing it fucking from the ground up. 
Anyway, but through the experience, I had met so many amazing people. And, you know, I met Katy Perry. I met a bunch of songwriters. I met, I just really, it helped me grow and as an art, as a writer and artist. And anyway, Katie, Katie, can I come over and use your shower? Right. (laughs) (laughs) So I met this artist at the time named Faras through I mis- mispronounced it. I apologize. It's okay. <laughs> Every everybody does. It's fine. Faras. So I met mm-hmm. Faras, who is one of my best friends to this day. Um, and we I messaged him on MySpace, which is hilarious. Oh, <laughs> remember, oh, remember MySpace. Oh, R.I.P. MySpace. <laughs> And I was like, um, I've been hearing your name, you know, love your stuff. Like, would you ever want to write together? Blah, blah, blah. So we started writing together. And I, cause, cause we decided me and my now husband were in the band ultraviolet sound. Mm -hmm. And we decided this, let's just quit this shit. It's not working. Like let's move on. And he started his own project named Brills, which took literally a DJ project, which literally took off within like six months of starting it. And I'm like, Oh my God, we've been in this band for six years. Fucking (laughs) nothing's happening. And of course, and now you're like touring the world and like making all this money. And I'm like, what the fuck is, am I going to do? You know, you got to do something else. Do your eyebrows, you know? Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Anyway. So met for Ross and we started just writing, 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 writing. And I was like, well, you know, I love songwriting. Like, let me just do that for a while, figure out what I'm going to do. And then through Faraz, he was really good friends with Katy Perry. And through him, her and I became closer. You know, we had met years before, but we became actual friends through that process. And again, this is like the shortest, longest story, but she... (laughs) She texted me one. She had heard what me and Faraz were writing, and right. she she really loved it. And one night, I'm I'm like out somewhere, some gay club, probably I can't remember. In she West te- Hollywood, of course. Yes. She texts me and she said, "Hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Do you want to come up to Santa Barbara and write with me, Max Martin, Doctor Luke, and Circuit?" And I was like, um, "Absolutely not." Yeah. <laughs> I was Ooh, like, uh, I might have to move a couple things. Let me check. It's so funny. Cause she says, we joke about it because she says, she said, what are you doing tomorrow night? And I was like, Oh, I'm going to, um, so-and-so's birthday party. And she was like, well, maybe you want to skip that. And I was like, <laughs> why? <laughs> anyway. So I drive up to Santa Barbara the next day and we write literally in like four or five hours, we write dark horse. Wow. And I have to tell you, at that time, I was filing for bankruptcy. I We were still living in our, you know, well, we at that point, we were in a small apartment. My, my boyfriend, now husband, was, you know, just starting to make money, but I had all this debt. Like, it was hell. Mm-hmm. And then Dark Horse happened and came out. And I remember thinking like, oh, I hope this, you know, does something (laughs) and it literally just like a dark horse became the biggest song ever. I Mm -hmm. reversed my bankruptcy like real quick. Thank God I was (laughs) able to do that. Yeah. And that was kind of just the moment where like the doors opened and it was like, Oh, this girl's actually good. Let me, I want to work with her. And from there, you know, I got so many uh, incredible opportunities and have been able to work with so many amazing people and, that's kind of where I am today now. Oh, that's great. I have a quick Katy Perry question. So yeah, obviously you guys bonded on the fact that you have the same last name, no relation. Yes. But tell me about the, the moment where we, both of you discovered that you both love Madonna and where did that go? Where did, where did that take you both? Oh, that's interesting. Like we've definitely, you know, we've had Madonna conversations, but I'm like, I, such a fanatic fan Madonna fan like (laughs) we haven't got into it that deep but I Uh but definitely you know I mean we we definitely bonded on her songs and and pop music I would say more more so on our love for pop music you know yeah because I I feel like um you know Katy Perry's a very singular you know sensation if you will no sure. but she's you know she she has her own thing and but 
like I've seen her live a few times, you see elements of Madonna in there. Totally. Also, her songwriting, but while, you know, at the same time, she keeps it, you know, very Katy Perry. Yeah. But um, I was, you know, the fans loved it when they got together for that V Magazine shoot. And- uh, Love that shoot. Yeah. That shoot is iconic. Yeah. I mean, she's always just been like very, just, you know, paying her respects to the queen. Mm-hmm. Like always like Madonna is just the queen. And and I remember um, when Madonna talked about her in the beginning. Remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She said she was like one of her favorite new artists or something. I mean- yeah, I think that it's kind of just this – we both – it's like an unspoken, like, right, we get it. She's the queen, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and she knows – and Katie knows how obsessed I am with her. Like, she was like, you know, let's go to Madame X and, like, we'll do the prayer circle. She knew that was, like, such a moment for me, so. <laughs> well, and did it was a I moment thought, for think, her, too. I thought Katie yeah. Perry – didn't Katie Perry talk to Madonna in the audience that night in the show? Yeah, she did. She did. See, Stefan, you and Katy Perry have something in common. I know. So I was, Sarah, <laughs> I, I was the one of the lucky people who got to talk to Madonna at one of her Philly shows. Oh, my God. Yeah. Although, like I tell everyone, and I say this all the time on the podcast, she was not as polite to me as she was to Katy Perry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Katie, she wasn't. Like, seriously, her and Katy Perry, it was like this little love fest. Like they were like, goo goo ga, like loving each other. And with me, she was just like very uh, terse, very sort of like but it's okay it's right. I, I don't I, I don't mind I'm like I'll it'll give me something to joke about with her when I talk to Madonna again so exactly <laughs> there you go so did you so you were sitting next to Katie when that happened well we were sitting we had really good seats we weren't in the like very front but we were just right behind and then they took oh Katie that's right down. they move you to like the aisle mm-hmm. right it's yeah like, it's like fake it's like fake seats Exactly. Yeah. So we were just watching from, you know, behind them, but I I was of course vicariously living through that moment. <laughs> what was your favorite moment of the Madame X tour if you don't mind me asking? I really loved the um all the typewriter, you know, all the girls that looked like her. Mm, in Vogue and Vogue, Vogue, yeah. and then and then I loved the drum circle part with all the women. Uh, Tony's favorite. Like that, I was so moved by Tony that. Tony loves the Batugaderas when they come down. Like, it literally, Tony and I went and got to see it a couple of times, and he started crying when they were coming down the aisle. It was just so magical. <laughs> like, And you could feel, you know, I could yeah. really feel in this tour, because I saw the one, uh, the one before, the tour before this one, and I felt in this tour and even Madame X, like, I felt her like passion again Mm -hmm. or something like she, I really felt her in this tour. I don't know, Mm -hmm. like her, her, her passion and her, she, I could feel her energy just in this show, you know? And I think maybe because it was so small, it it was so cool. To experience it was, it it was like a that. bit bizarre to see her that close in, in you know doing this show for I mean I've seen her up close many times but not for two hours you know right so right it was kind of weird and then there were like the there were no frills I mean there was like mm-hmm. there was good production value for the show but it wasn't like her past extravaganzas you know mm-hmm. like it was, it was very pared down and I thought that was also strange to see her you know it was like it was just a very simplified ver- Madonna show and, oh man, mm-hmm. I loved it. I thought it was great, you know. What do you yeah. mean there are no frills? There were children on stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her two little twins came out too and it was so they were cute. adorable. <laughs> oh, and Mercy came out too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. God, cute. luckiest girls in the world be able to do that. Literally. Uh, I just hope they got paid. Uh, okay. Oh, you know they did. <laughs> <laughs> you know they did. Our ticket prices we had to pay for something. Trust. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so Sarah, we don't want you to give away any of your like, you know, trade secrets, but what is your or, you know, like what's your songwriting process like? Like how do you how do you find the inspiration or does it just come to you or do you have to be in the studio for it to all come out or is it um, always different? It's always different. You know, for me, I'm very like uh spiritual and very um 
just believe that, you know, artists are channels and Mm -hmm. we have to like connect to something sort of in the universe to sort of bring something through us. I'm all very like, you know, arty farty in that way. So (laughs) some people are like, okay, girl, whatever. But it's just, it's just (laughs) what I think, you know, like, I don't know what, why I'm thinking this idea, but it just comes to me. And then, Mm -hmm. You know, it's, but doing it now for so long, there's like kind of an art to it, doing it like every single day or having to just, it's like a job now, you know? So, but for me, I kind of walk into a studio session with just an open mind. I'm all about the vibe. I bring like Mm -hmm. sage and, you know, I kind of just make the lighting better and then just. I I just like to create a vibe and then I, you know, I read tarot. So I bring my tarot cards or I talk to the artist about what's going on in their life or, or the other songwriters or just kind of open Mm -hmm. up the space to be comfortable. And then, you know, it, 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 some days it starts with someone's playing chords and a melody will come out and then I'll start singing something or I'll walk in and say, you know, um, I've been thinking about this, like this should be what we talk about in the song or, you know, it's just different all the time. But, yeah. but, but when I break it down, it's like, I love to sort of start with the music, then kind of get some melodies, then say like, okay, what is this song wanting to say? Like, what are we wanting to talk about? You know, and then start mm-hmm. to put some lyrics to it. But, but it is different every time for me. Yeah. yeah and I was going to so think. Oh, in, in the sorry, in the case of like swish swish, which which came first? Well, swish swish was definitely the track was there. Um, we worked with um, this artist uh, DJ producer named Duke Dumont. Love and- him. Yeah, and he had this sort of vibe, you know, the like, don't know what is what, that whole thing, yeah. which, which was a sample. And and he started playing that, and, like, it just was so fun, the energy. And we were kind of doing, like, runway walks and just being, like, super, <laughs> you know, like, having fun with it. And I have to say, I do not re- – and the thing is, is I forget a lot of stuff, like – ideals that come out and then I forget them. Like that's just what happens to me. So I literally do not remember how it like the idea came about, but I do remember it was like, we went in with this intention of like a fun club runway, just like sassy anthem, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and yeah. And I remember Katie having this line, that she had had a few, I don't know, a few sessions before this one about, um, you know, a tiger loses no sleep and then mm-hmm. the shellfish or a sheep, like, you know, bottom feeders type of thing. Like, I remember her having that line and I was like, that's so cool, you know, saying like, mm-hmm. I don't know, it kind of just came from us like feeling sassy and like fun. Yeah, I, I was obsessed with that song. Like, uh, uh, me it, too. It, it, was, it was so damn good. I think I've tried to memorize every single line of Nicki Minaj's rap in that song. I oh almost my had god! It. I almost when, have it, but it, she's quick. When yeah, they and, and when they were like, you know, Nicki is going to do a verse on it. I was like, what? This is so <laughs> sick! Oh my god, it's one of my favorite songs for sure mm-hmm. that I've ever oh my been god, a part it's of. Perfect for when you're like strutting down the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, I have a question. So how is the, how is the, how do you approach the songwriting when, for example, you're working for a male artist like Adam Lambert or Years and Years, as opposed to when you're working with Katie or, um, or, you know, you wrote a, you wrote a song for Adina Menzel, you know, just Mm. like take us through that process. So, I mean, do you have an arsenal of songs and you kind of try to match them or is it, you know, or do you just you um, get to know the artist and then write something? Yeah, I mean, he, my favorite sort of way to write is with the artist in the room. And, you yeah. know, luckily, um, 
a lot of the artists I've worked with have been also incredible writers. Mm-hmm. Um, like for instance, Ollie from years and years, who yeah. is one of my favorite people alive, like him and I just immediately connected. And like, I, and I think because I've been there before and I, I've been through the game of like Mm -hmm. being an artist and getting signed and getting dropped and making a record and the struggle of it and all, I I just kind of understand it. So, you know, someone like Ollie, like me and him just connected immediately and Adam same. I mean, me and him are just, you know, really good friends because we just, we connect. And I think Mm -hmm. that's why I love being in the room with an artist, even if they aren't like the best writer, just Mm -hmm. having them there going, I'm going through this, or this is happening in my life, or I feel this way. It gives me kind of inspiration to draw from. Um, so yeah, but, but in a sense of like, like if they aren't in the room, it's harder because I do like having that per- human connection. But yeah. if they if they aren't in the room, I kind of just like try to step into the essence of like, okay, I, you know, this is their this is what they usually talk about or sing about, and and I, I don't know. I try to just connect on some way. You're just channeling um, them. Yeah, I try to. Yeah, but obviously, them being in the room is like my ultimate favorite experience no and and it's it's very apparent because i mean from all of the songs that at least the ones that i that i've been listening to they all seem very personal and they are collaborations as opposed to you selling someone a song one thousand percent yeah and i and i'm really really into the art of collaboration i just think Mm -hmm. that i love collaborating like yes can i write a song on my own sure but when it's for someone else or whatever, even if it's not for someone else, I just love other people's energies and feeding off each other. And, you know, there really is an art to it. And I, and I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm curious because you have collaborated with some huge, huge names, including Dua Lipa. And I think from, I've heard on her numerous social channels and posts that she, she refers to you as her queen. <laughs> some, her fairy, very, some very high praise. Her fairy godmother, I think she said once, which is so cute. And I, would, well, personally, I just want to thank you for physical and levitating. Uh, because oh, yes. I love, Please, love, thank you. love those songs. Oh, and well, thank you. Those I, are I just, some of my favorites, too. When I heard those come, uh, when I finally heard levitating after the album was released, I was like, Thank you for this song. Like, cause it's yes. just so, so good. Um, so how did that project come? How did you, did you, which came first, the Dua or the album? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, Dua is like, she's now one of my, you know, dearest friends and she's just such a light. I mean, she is, I cannot say enough good things about her. Like she is just the most genuine, beautiful human being and happens to be stunning. So it's like insane. Um, But uh, we actually worked on her very, on her first record. um, And we did a song called Genesis, uh, which is the first Mm -hmm. song on, on that album. And, you know, she was in the room for that and she was just starting out, just, you know, starting doing sessions and, and, we just kind of connected like on a, on a spiritual soul level of like sisters. Like we, we just had that instant, like, okay, like I see you, I get you, you know? And, Mm -hmm. and even though it was early in her career, she just, she came in with, you know, such, I, such strong ideas and strong vision and of who she is and what she wanted to be. And, Anyway, so we just like really connected on that first uh, first writing session, and we did a few more um, writing sessions for that album, but none of the songs sort of made it. But we we kind of just kept stayed connected. And then when she um, started to make this record, you know, me and this other writer named Coffee, who we we wrote physical and levitating together with Dua. Um, we just who we also wrote Genesis together. We um went to Jamaica with her, like I think it was like a couple years ago, to kind of start the process of this album and you know um 
And we just, the relationship grew and the friendship grew. And, you know, I think when we, we did a trip just not shortly after that to London and that's kind of when levitate, well, it is when levitating happened. And it was kind of the first song I think in her process that was like, Oh, this is cool. This Mm -hmm. is like the direction I kind of want to go in. And, you know, I can't speak enough about how her and her and she just had such a vision for this album mm-hmm. and she stuck to it like you know and and your second record as an artist like that's a big deal and that's really hard because there's a lot of pressure and she was just like this is what I think this is what I want this is how I think it should go and she fucking did it you know mm-hmm. <laughs> and and so and she's an amazing writer too and I think she sh- she needs to get more credit for that because she comes in with ideas constant ideas melodies lyrics like so yeah, so so we did levitating and then I mean we've done so many sessions for this album mm-hmm. but but levitating and physical were the ones that just really just, you know, stood the test of time. Um but yeah, I mean Madonna was a big inspiration too for this mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. her, you know. I mean she loves Madonna. I love Madonna. Obviously, we've talked about her endlessly, so yeah, so, I thought yeah. there was a, there was some nods to her confessions album with mm-hmm. with this album for sure. For sure, and physical is, a, is such is a great, great thing. Physical is an amazing track. It sounds like it was lifted from 1983. Uh, I know <laughs> we had so much fun writing that. We were just bouncing off the walls writing that oh, song. <laughs> so this album is unique in the way that it came out in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, and yeah. it's being promoted in a, a way that no other album has been promoted before. How, how do you feel it's it's going? I mean, it's already been number one in the UK for several weeks. It's charted really high in America. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's honestly been incredible. I, I you know, because it got leaked. So yeah. she, she didn't, they weren't planning on releasing it this early. I think it was supposed to come, I don't know, in the summer or sometime. And I just... And, you know, I talked to her even around the time and I just feel even though, you know, you have a plan in your mind of, okay, it's coming in June or whenever it was supposed to come and, and, and then it gets leaked and it's this kind of devastating thing at first. Cause you know, anyone leaking your art is like not terrible, cool. mm-hmm. but I think it was just a, you know, it was just meant to be because I think it's brought people so much joy in this time mm-hmm. and like, it's just you know, made people like feel light and fun and joy. And like, it's just been kind of like a big blessing during this time. And, and yeah, it's been doing so good in the UK and here and we're all just over the moon. I mean, it's, and, and especially even if I just had nothing to do with this, I am so over the moon for her because one of my favorite things is just an artist really sticking to their vision and she just did that. And I think that that's so, you know, amazing. So, so yeah, it's, it's a very, very cool thing to be a part of. Yeah. I was, one, I was one, happy I, that it was out because it's, yeah. you know, I'm in the suburbs at my family's and it's been giving me something to listen to <laughs> during my workouts. And Right. Yeah, I know. We needed it. We really yeah, needed yeah, it. Yeah. But one unexpected side effect of uh, this coming out when it did is I know it's happened with me. It's like it's brought the fans closer to Dua Lipa because she gets online and she, you know, starts doing these lives. Totally. And and I, you know, I didn't really see her before as someone who spoke. You know what I mean? It was, she was mm-hmm. always like, you know, the girl who sang and danced. But now she's like an actual person, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. a singer, songwriter, you know, who's going through what we're going through. But she just happens to have the best album out right now. You know, Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think she's so gorgeous and I think like at first sometimes when you know when people are just like that stunning you're like Mm -hmm. whoa like you know and then hearing her (laughs) hearing her be so intelligent and Mm -hmm. have an opinion and and just knowing her and knowing what an incredible writer she is like it just and so genuine like it just makes her even more beautiful person you know so she's just a superstar and that and I, I'm so grateful that we have her. Yeah, yeah. No, this album totally humanized her. I mean, because 
mm-hmm. with her first album. To me, she was very exotic. I, I, I saw her as one of the girls from the Robert Palmer videos. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> you know, totally, she was like, yeah. she was just like, you know, high fashion, you know, and now she's, you know, she's, she's very human and, and she's someone that I would like want to dance with at the club, you know? Totally. Totally. Yeah. I loved the uh, Instagram store uh, live video that you and her did where you were like flaunting, oh. flaunting that nail job that you had. I, I don't, your nails <laughs> looked amazing. In oh that. my God. That's the thing of this whole quarantine is my, usually I have the longest nails and they're like always done to to a T, but I'm just like suffering now. Oh, you mean you didn't do those? No. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I wish. God, I wish. That's your second calling. You know, if the music, if you, if you want to leave the music industry to start doing nails. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) I'm, I'm almost as passionate about them, honestly. (laughs) Wait, so why haven't you written for Madonna yet? Uh, I'm curious to know. You know, this is the greatest question of my life. But I, let me tell you, after Dark Horse happened mm-hmm. and I started doing a lot more sessions, she was making, um, she was making, oh, I'm blanking She's making on Rebel it. Heart. Yeah. Rebel she Heart. was making Rebel yeah. Heart. And I had, my manager called me and goes, do you want to work with Madonna? She wants to work with you. And I was like, um, yes, this is all that I ever like have been living for. We had two days booked in the studio mm. for like months later. Like uh, it was like a couple months after this call. And so I'm like freaking out. I mean, I've told everybody, I was just like, this is it. This is like the worlds are coming together. (laughs) This is my moment. And then she ended up doing, uh, meeting this writer, Mozella. I don't know if you've Mm -hmm. heard of her. Yeah. Yeah. Who I love her so much. She's the sweetest and most talented and I love her to death, but she ended up meeting Mozella and was like, so, you know, they connected so crazy that she canceled all a ton of her sessions after that. Mm. And one of the sessions happened to be a couple of them happened to be ours. Mm. <laughs> so I was like, no, you know, but <laughs> so then, so then that never happened. And then my, one of my closest friends, who's an amazing producer who I did, we did physical together, Jason Evigan. He's just oh, the him. best. He was working with her. They wrote Ghost Town together. Oh my God. One of my favorite current Madonna songs. Right. Same, same. Yeah. And, and Jason knows how obsessed with her I am. He actually has a song to a couple songs on. Um, yeah. He on, wrote crazy. Yes. Oh, that's when it happened. So, so he wrote Ghost Town with her. And then for this album, I knew she was writing. And I, I talked to Jason and I was like, Jason, please, like, <laughs> me bring on. me in Get here. Me like, what is happening? He's like, okay, okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. And he, and he, he uh, was working with her and he goes, you know, you should really write with Sarah Hudson. Um, she, like, loves you. And, you know, and, and she said, uh, oh, isn't she um, like Katy Perry's writer or something? <laughs> so she knew who I was. Okay. So that was cool. Mm-hmm. At least. But it never happened. It just, I don't know why it just never happened because for this. Because you both place. are waiting for the right project. Yes. It's not your time just yet. Right? <sighs> God. But keep putting it out there. Oh, and- I'll never stop. I, I don't care if she's like 90 and making an album like <laughs> Please, Madonna, I need this to happen in my life. Yeah. You never so, know. There could be a one-off project that she, you know, like a soundtrack song or Right. Something. I like it, this. It, it'll come along, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, it's already out there in the universe. It's I believe it. I, be- I believe it's yeah. going to happen when it's yes. supposed to. But I've been so close, you know? Mm-hmm. Closer than everybody else. I mean, yeah. Uh, right. And I guess she knows, you know, is that Katy Perry's writer? Like, so she does know that I exist. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I'm surprised you didn't mention it to her at the prayer circle. Oops, Madonna. Um, uh, by the way, after this prayer circle, can we just write uh, a song real quick? I mean, <laughs> I should have. God, <laughs> that's hysterical. Um, so I know you have a bevy of in-person Madonna stories besides the prayer circle, but can you tell yeah. us, some of, enlighten us? I want to hear some of these stories because I know okay. you, you had posted about the young me, the first time you met Madonna. Um, yes. It, it was during, I think the it was during the Virgin tour, I believe. Yes. It was, no, well, that was when I was, I was too little. I don't even remember sort of mm-hmm. that happening, but the first time was um, the MTV Awards. Um, when she did express yourself <gasps> with no. the with the girls, which yeah. is one of my favorite performances ever. Oh, so, yeah, mine too. First so, time we saw her Vogue. Oh, yeah, that's when she first broke out some voguing at the oh, very end. Yep, 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 yep. And behind the screen when she started, yeah, so good yep. with the chair. Oh God, and her hair, just yes. like everything. <laughs> oh, I just love during that time. So my, so okay, my godfather who passed away, who is just, uh, he was just the my first gay best friend actually. <laughs> um, he managed share. Which is like, which is iconic in itself. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, I yeah. know. So, and he, you know, was best friends with my parents, and you know, my dad had known Cher from the seventies. They did some things, music stuff together, like just very cool mm-hmm. history kind of things, you know, with Cher. So, anyway, he managed Cher. Cher, I think, performed that might was. Did she do Turn Back Time on that same show? Oh Maybe. yeah. 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 Oh, that yeah. was 89. I think she yeah. did. Right. Okay. So it's this is interesting. It's kind of cool. So during that performance, not to talk about Cher, but really oh, quick. Oh, it's okay. During that performance, she goes, Hi, Marky. And you'll see if you watch back, that's my dad. And <laughs> we were, because we were sitting like in the fourth row or something, like at the MTV Awards. It was 1989. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. yeah, it was. Anyway, so that's kind of cool. But but so my godfather just knew that I was like the biggest Madonna fan in the world. He's like, you know, let's go backstage before the show. And I know her manager, Freddie DeMann at the time. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'll set up a thing where you can, you know, you guys can meet. And I was like, oh my God, I'm freak, freaking <laughs> out. I brought my, I had a ton of, obviously all her records at the time. I brought uh, the... Uh, the first record, Madonna, and then I brought mm-hmm. um, like a prayer for her to sign. So we were backstage. I have that. I posted that picture in front of her dressing room door. Yes, that's what I saw. <laughs> I saw that. So we were back there waiting. I must have been nine, I think, or eight. And we were back there, uh, back <laughs> in the hallway, waiting for her to come out. And her door was open, and I remember just hearing her voice. And this was when she talked like super, sort of like Michigan-y, New York-y kind mm-hmm. of, yeah. bra- you know, bra- that kind of brash Madonna That's voice. Amazing. And I remember her sa- it, hearing her and being like, "It's so ho- cold in here. It's so cold in here." I just remember that, like, and being like, "Oh my god, that's her," you know. Oh my god, <laughs> she was complaining about that back then. See. Oh. Uh, some yeah. things never change because she Literally. was complaining about that on every night I went and saw the Madame X tour. It's cold in here. <laughs> really? So turn off the air conditioner. Oh my God. So she was just, you know, screaming that like, it's so cold in here. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> then she comes out with her manager. And I just remember being like, I was like the height of her, like right at her boobs. Mm-hmm. And I just remember I was so like overwhelmed. Like I didn't really you know, I, like look at her in the face too much, but I just remember her black bustier, black biker shorts, like little socks and, you know, dancer shoes, whatever. <laughs> and she came out just so kind of like that Madonna, like, hi, 
you know, and, and, and <laughs> I'm like, will you sign the, you know, could you sign these? She signs them. And then I was like, you know, can we take a picture? And she goes, no, I don't have any makeup on. And then just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, that was it. That was my first moment ever meeting her, my first experience. And I'm like, you know, devastated at like eight years old. Like, oh my God, what the hell? <laughs> And then, so that happened. And then I'm trying to think what the next one was. Oh, so then I became like actually really close with her guitar player, Monty. Yes. Uh Love Monty. Who I love Monty. And we were like hanging out for a while. We had met through, I don't even remember how we met, but he was just starting to, you know, play guitar for her and I think it was the Drown World Tour was his mm-hmm. first. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I got to go to a bunch of those like friends and family shows in the beginning. Of oh, just, you like, lucky girl. Oh my God. It was so amazing. Like a hundred people watched, oh. you know, it was oh. unreal. So I had met her very briefly again during that, like super quick, like, hi, like, that's it. She just walks away, you know? <laughs> and then, I mean, mm-hmm. they were all these like crazy brief, like, hi, gotta go kind of encounters, yeah. you know? And then, um, interesting, st- really interesting story. So you had Donna Delory on your mm-hmm. podcast, right? Yes. Yep. So right when Donna started like doing, this was before that I was friends with Monty, right when Donna started doing her own music, right. I be- I became like really, really into her music. And I like thought she was, am- I mean, I still do. She's amazing. Yeah. I love her stuff. Her voice is iconic. And um, I was dating this guy at the time who's one of my best friends now to this day. And I would always take him to go see her shows. And like, I was just like, Donna, she's amazing. Da, 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 da. Anyway, long story short, we broke up and he started going to some yoga class. And I think she was going to that class too. Long story short, they started dating <laughs> and they had a kid together. Oh, so Donna's yeah. oldest kid, Sophia. And I was like, what? This is so crazy. Like my best friend, ex-boyfriend, like starts dating Donna and has a baby with her. Like there's just all these weird, Mm -hmm. like. It's written in the stars. You know. You need to pull that kid aside and be like, listen, kid, if it wasn't for my love of Madonna, you wouldn't exist. Right? (laughs) I think that's true. (laughs) If I I didn't like Madonna, I would have never (laughs) have known who Donna DeLore was. And if I didn't know who Donna DeLore was, I never would have brought your future father to go see her. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Um, Yeah. Yeah, So if you ever need, if you ever need a shower in the future, just hit up that kid and tell him you owe me one. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. So, yeah, and then I, a few, I don't know, when um, a few years ago, maybe like five years ago, some Grammy party um, Madonna had, and I went with Katie, and Katie introduced me to her, like, this is Sarah, She's I write a lot of songs with her, and, you know, she just was so like, hi, nice to meet you, and then done. <laughs> You know, like all these (laughs) quick, like she does not give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Those have been all my experiences. And, and I, I have to love them because that's just who she is. And I, she's a fucking iconic. So I'm like, oh my God, like, of course this would be my experience. And then, you know, my, the last one at the Madame X tour, when we did the prayer circle, that was the one where I was like, okay, she actually like, we had a moment, you know, she Mm -hmm. grabbed my arm, she looked at the tattoo, like we had this moment anyway. So there's just been all these weird little things with like my dad singing backgrounds and then Donna Delory and then, you know, the Monty and then, you know, just all these strange connections. I feel like they're just guideposts on the road that's going to take you to your collaboration with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I yeah, just Madonna. question what kind of song would you like to write with Madonna? Have you ever <laughs> thought about that? Like, would you like to write a big dance anthem, which yes, please, please, please. Or yeah. would you like to write a ballad, which would be great as well, but dance, dance, dance. No, no. <laughs> I mean, my dream would be just another Vogue. You uh, know? I was because... hoping you were going to say that. Just another like incredible dance song. But, you know, when she was making Rebel Heart, I had this whole vision for her of like my plan. You know, of course, when I had those sessions in the calendar, I was like preparing for weeks and months of like, what's, you know, (laughs) of just like, this is my chance, you know? And I had this whole like vision at the time of like ray of light, like another ray of light, like another sort of like spiritual, like goddess breakthrough Mm -hmm. type of, you know, which she kind of did in moments with Rebel Heart. But that was like my vision at the time. But now I just feel like another just fucking iconic dance like let's just make the gays happy like that yeah yes that is just my goal sort of in anything i ever do so of course if i (laughs) make the gays happy it's just to me it's all about the gays so i'm like if they're happy i'm happy so especially if it's with madonna i'm like girl Mm -hmm. let's just go let's just go there you know yeah i mean i've been saying that every time she comes when she announces that she's coming out with another album i'm like please jesus give (laughs) me a throw down anthem i just i want to balls to the wall like no stop like dance anthemic song you know i know same same while i was you know just like excited about the prospect of batuka and all that entails stefan was like Please, Tony. Please, Tony. I just need one. Just give me one uh, song. You know, one do dance you song. Feel- I, like, I just need a little <laughs> disco, Madonna. Just please. When, when do you feel like is the last time you were just like satisfied in that way with her? I, I think in Madame X with God Control and uh, right, Living God for Control. Love and Rebel Heart. Yeah. Uh, I Don't Search, I Find, obviously. Um and in MDNA, there were several moments, you know, like Girl Gone Wild and I'm mm-hmm, Addicted. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, I, I feel like she still dips her toe, but I want it to be like a full on assault, you know? I know. So. Yeah. I think the last time I ever like almost like threw up from excitement <laughs> right. after listening to a Madonna song was yeah. probably the very first time I heard Get Together off of Confessions. Oh, mm-hmm. When I heard that. Uh, the swelling synths in the beginning with her voice sort of like coming from the echoes and uh, then when the beat hit in i i remember listening to that and at the small office that i was working at and i turned to my coworker and i said oh my god tiffany this is the the madonna music i've been waiting for her to make her entire career yeah and i i have been ecstatic from all from every album for certain tracks here or there but i think get together was like the the most recent Madonna song that I, uh, uh, other than Vogue, it was like Vogue Mm -hmm. and then Get Together Mm -hmm. was probably like the other song. I mean, there's tons of, I love uh, tons of Madonna songs, but. I have to say like from top to bottom album, loving every minute, I'd hard, it stops for me top to bottom at Hard Candy. Mm -hmm. And then after Mm -hmm. Hard Candy, there's moments for me, like in MDNA and then um, Rebel Heart and then this Madame Max. Like I, I love moments, but then I don't like love top to like I'm not super gagged top to bottom. Right. Yeah, you skip around on. Some I of them. skip around. I skip around. But Hard Candy is the last one where I'm like top to bottom gag. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but well, and me- I think it's because, as you know. When you look at the credits list, you know, heart, you know, MDNA, she worked with a lot of different people, you know, same thing yeah. with, Rebel Heart, with Rebel Heart. There was a lot of the songwriting process, I think, got disrupted from her. Yeah. I think, you yeah. Know, she had plans to work with Avicii and then Avicii went to rehab allegedly mm-hmm. and you know so then she had to start working with Diplo instead. And I think, you know, they still tried to salvage some of the Avicii tracks. And mm-hmm. so I think it was a bit. You know, and same thing she's complaining about with, with MDNA. Yeah. It was a little scattered and piecemeal. And she, that's why when she was doing Madame X, I think, you know, she was, 
she started writing with Stara, right? Didn't she? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I remember kind of around the time she started writing again, because, and I remember like, I feel like what happened, and I don't know if this is true or not, this is just what I feel, is that she started to like do this, the rounds of writing, kind of like with all different writers and whatever. And then do you remember, like, I don't know where it was, but she, Guy O'Siri, like, commented on on one of her posts or something, and she responded to him and was like, oh, yeah, like, uh, sh- I should just do what everyone else is doing or some kind of, like. It was when she, yeah, she bitched yeah. Do you about, remember like, that? Ha- having to do all the, like, writing camp stuff. Yes. Yeah, she didn't want to do. Yeah. And, and like, she told guys, like, get me in touch with Ms. M- M- you yeah. know. Right, yeah. And then I feel like at that moment, she was, like, in my heart, I feel like she was like, fuck this. And she kind of went back to Mir Weiss or Mirwa, whatever, however you say his mm-hmm. name. And then she just kind of went back to her like heart on this album. Yeah. That's why I said like when I watched the tour and when I listened to this album, I kind of feel like that old Madonna that I loved so much that was always taking risks and chances. Like I felt that on this album. Yeah. I, yeah. I- Again, that as well. So yeah, Sarah. Now tell us about your other project, Right to the Source. Oh, Right to the Source. That's my podcast that I have Mm -hmm. with actually my one of my great friends, who's also a songwriter, who was also another writer on Ghost Town. Um, His name's Evan Bogart. Yeah, he wrote Ghost Town with her and Jason Evigan and this and Sean Douglas, this other writer. Well, tell Um, him we said thank you. Yes, I, thank you very much. I will definitely tell him. Yeah, I, so I think I, I just wanted to throw this in there. So Evan Bogart is the son of Neil Bogart, who created Casablanca Records, correct? Yep, yep. Yeah, that's and, a legend and, right there. <laughs> right. Yeah, who, which is so crazy, another connection, who Neil Bogart signed my dad and his brothers there you go. <laughs> in the 70s. And right. now, me, now me and Evan are friends and have a podcast together. Very strange dots mm-hmm. connecting everywhere, you know? I love it. I love it. So, yeah, it's our podcast just about, um, you know, not, not so much um, about, like, songwriting, but just about artists and different mediums and how you connect to, you know, spirituality or does that play a part in your art or what's your daily Mm -hmm. routine? Kind of just getting in the minds of artists. Um, And we've been doing, we've done one season and, you know, after all this stuff is over, we're going to start our second season, but you know, oh, I love good. I love to talk. So <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> so love to listen. It was perfect. It was a perfect um, outlet. No, I, this is great. I can't wait to start listening because I love I love to hear how things come together and everyone has a different method and a different process. So it's 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 always great to see how ideas get formed and and how everything gets followed up. You know. Yeah, no, it's it's super cool. It's been really interesting talking to people just about their spiritual beliefs and you know, we've we've talked to people that are like, you know, super super spiritual and then eight, we had like, you know, people that are basically atheists like that don't believe mm-hmm. in any kind of spirituality. So, it's just really interesting that that connection to, you know, making art. Oh, so cool. So yeah, and you also do tarot card readings, yes? I do. Yeah, I'm obsessed with tarot and I have an amazing teacher who I've, you know, worked with for years and um just started sort of doing them. You know, I just do them for my friends and like my family mm-hmm. and people in at sessions or just for fun and then you know, during this whole quarantine COVID ex- experience, I'm like, you know, how can I help people and kind of just bring a little perspective to, to, to their life and bring some tarot into it. And also in donating like 40% of the readings to music cares, um, which helps out, you know, struggling artists during this time. Oh yeah. So yeah. Is it something that you can do? Like you don't have to do it in person. Can you do it like FaceTime tarot card readings or you have to do it in person? No, I've been doing them actually just, I get their information like 
you know, when were you born? Mm -hmm. What's your sign? What do you want to look into? What's your full name kind of thing? And then I just kind of go within and call in their energy and I send them a video of their readings. So that's Nice yeah. little method. So it's sort of like a little, a, they get a, uh, like a MOV, a dot MOV or something that they. Uh... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, obviously in person is ideal, but yeah. you know, can't do that right now. So. Yeah. I was, I wasn't sure if it was something where like, because it's such a spiritual thing, if you needed to feel their energy or if, you know, if, the, if that adds to it, or if, if you didn't feel that it would, it wouldn't work. Yeah, no, it definitely helps, but I can, I can do it with the information they send me and, Mm. you know, it's, it's cool. I love it. I just, I'm so passionate about it, about Tara. That's amazing. I'm going to have to like DM you and talk to you some more about this because I'm kind of a novice card thrower. I have a universal weight deck and this is funny because sometimes when I'll pull cards for myself, I'll get the queen of cups and I'm always convinced it has something to do with Madonna. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, she's our queen. So, oh, Sarah, when you so because you've met Madonna a bunch of times, do you get asked questions from other people uh, about meeting Madonna? And I'm I'm curious if people ask you the same question that they ask me after having met Madonna twice. Like they always ask me the same question. Which is what? What is it? What does she smell like? <laughs> wow, interesting. Like all the I'm... time, every at, like every time, because like, I I danced with her at the Rebel Heart tour. I was the unapologetic bitch at one, at her, one of her Philly shows. Yeah. And then after that, people were like, I, I, "I kid you not." Like, I mean, it's like over fifty people must have asked me, "What does she smell like?" That is know. so interesting. I've I never breathe got... her in. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never got asked that question. Honestly, I, the thing people ask me the most is why have you never written with her? Because I think uh. <laughs> I, they know I'm so obsessed with her. Mm-hmm. And I they always are like, why have you not written with her? I'm like, I'm asking the same thing. Hello. You know, yeah. like <laughs> it's, it's coming. It's coming. Don't worry. Um, so what do, I want to ask you guys, what if you just had to take one album like that's mm. all you could have is one yeah. Madonna album. What would it be? <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then what song? Just one. I know it's the hardest question in the world. Off, does it have to be off the same album? No, it doesn't have to be off the same album. Well, okay. This actually kind of happened to me, so bear with me. Um, Why? What do you mean? Well, years and years ago, my I'm from. My family's from Panama, and I grew up in Houston, Texas. So my brother, my cousin, and I drove from Houston, Texas to Panama, and it took us about eight days. I had one cassette tape with me, and it was on Breathless. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. So I must have listened to it three million times. Wow. Wow. and sometimes we'd be, you know, driving and it was like really dark at night. And my cousin would be like, put Madonna in and turn it up loud, you know? So <gasps> yes. he would fall asleep. But yeah, that that's the album. And uh, Vogue wow. is the song. <gasps> uh, wow. All right. I will, I will say. That's an unexpected answer, by the way. Yeah, I'm, breathless. I, I'm breathless wouldn't be the route I thought you were going to go. Me that's neither. That's all I but... had. That's all I had on me. <laughs> so it has some like deeper, you have a deeper like connection to it. Of- yeah, I mean, it's like I could have I could have brought my like a prayer cassette or my Immaculate Collect. No, actually, Immaculate wasn't out yet. Um, but that was the cassette that I had just bought. And I actually hadn't listened to it. So I didn't know it was going to be what it was. And... It was strange at first, and then it just, it, you know, like any Madonna album that you live with, it just becomes natural, you know? Right, mm-hmm. it yeah. really does. Oh, I love yeah. that answer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say if I had to be stuck with one Madonna album, like on an island, it would probably be Erotica. Ooh. Just because I remember when, like... After she did I'm Breathless, you know, I'm Breathless, it's like show tune Madonna, Mm -hmm. Broadway. And then when Erotica comes out, it was like Madonna took us to the dance club. And it was, you know, like I think with Erotica, you get a little bit of, you know, you have Deeper and Deeper. You have Fever, you know, you have, but then you also have like some really great house tracks you know like why is it so hard and totally. you also have 
but then I love Bad Girl and I uh, love Rain. Thief like, of Hearts. Some, yeah. Just, of oh heart. my God. So uh, there's such, just some really great songwriting and some really great production. I just, I've always loved Madonna Dance. However, I will say if I had to be stuck with one song for the rest of my life, it would definitely be Vogue. And even uh, though Vogue is not, even though Vogue is not on Erotica, you do get a little sample of Erotica in Deeper and Deeper, which is why I'd be able to live with that album. Because at least I'd have, <laughs> okay, I have a little Vogue. I have a little Vogue in, in right. Deeper and Deeper. Right. So. Oh my touch God. touch of Vogue. <laughs> really, like, iconic. I have to say, it's really hard. Obviously, we know this mm-hmm. is the hardest question ever. But I'm going to have to say it's Confessions. For yeah, me. that's a good just one. Just yeah. because from top to bottom, I'm just like, uh, like it just makes me want to dance and it makes me like emotional. And it's just, I just, I mean, again, I, it's the hardest question to answer, but that's, that would be my album. And then obviously, Vogue. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> how can is you not? There, it's just, <laughs> the, it's the greatest moment in history. Um, Stefan, I think this is the perfect time for my favorite part of the podcast. I, I think you're correct. We've sort of already sort of done. We've already yeah, sort of started. We're going the, in that direction. Yes. Oh. So, Sarah, every every okay. every episode, we do what's called the lightning round, and Ooh, uh, it's, it's just a couple quick questions off the top of your head. Don't think too hard on it. It's wherever you're at in your journey with Madonna right now. Okay, um, I'm ready. So just, all right. And I'm going to throw in an extra one that normally people don't get because you're a songwriter. So I'll put yeah. that in the end. But, um, okay. What's your, fa- what's your favorite Madonna song? Obviously, we, I think we already covered that. Vogue. Okay. Favorite Madonna video? Oh, my God. Ugh. Okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I, do I have to answer like really fast? Yeah, well, just off the top of your head. Like what, okay. what, what do you think of? Like, oh, okay, video. Like a you can prayer. do top three. You can do top three. Okay, okay. Like a prayer. Uh-huh. Um, Vogue. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously. Yeah. And I have to say, I kind of want to say hung up. I don't know why. Like, it, it wouldn't be something normally I'd say, but I want to just mm-hmm. say it right now because I'm seeing. Well, it. I mean, you, you're taking confessions with you to the to the to the to Mars when you, you have no other Madonna <laughs> album. Yeah, so. hung up, hung <laughs> up. Mm-hmm. Favorite Madonna look can be from video, tour, photo shoot, in person meeting. Whatever. Favorite Madonna look. Hands down, blonde ambition. Like a virgin, gold, mm-hmm. sh- gold goatier, the curly hair. I mean, I love the yeah. ponytail, but the curly hair, that just that look makes me feel I want to puke and cry. Like, I'm I just, know, me too. Oh. <laughs> favorite yeah. Madonna lyric. Do you have Ooh. a favorite Madonna lyric? Honestly, I said it the other day to someone I forgot we were talking about. Rejection is the greatest aphrodisiac. Yes. Oh, so good. <laughs> it's just like, yes, bitch. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many I love, but that one just always sticks with me. Mm-hmm. No, that's, I, and it's such a deep cut, too. You know, like a lot of people don't know that. Yep. Yep. I don't know why, because uh, Forbidden Love 1 is amazing. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I always, I think one of mine is from miles away when it's you always have the biggest mm. heart when we're six thousand miles apart so good mm-hmm. i just i love like it's so truthful to hear that where you yep. know like the whole distance can make you feel like you love someone more than you actually do you know like right. in person in person it's one thing when they're away you're like oh god i really love that person <laughs> god you know when that Music, what a fucking album, that whole album. Like, maybe I, I'm like, should I take that? But Paradise Not For Me is like one of my favorite songs of all time. Really? Oh. Yeah. 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 And seeing from that album, I love I Deserve It. I think that is just so stripped uh, down and so same. personal, mm-hmm. you know? Same. Uh, Sarah, uh, thank you so much for yeah, thank you. joining us today. This was great. I you learned guys, so thank much about you, you and about what it's like to be in front of Madonna throughout your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank and I, you. I, I, I just want to so say 
on a, on a personal note, I want to thank you for the Witness album because I <gasps> oh. I, was do, I was doing solo travel in Greece about two weeks after that album came out, and it was like my hiking workout music because I, oh. I had downloaded it on my phone, but I didn't have like Wi-Fi anywhere, so I was like, "What can I listen to?" Because I don't have Spotify access, I would just listen to Witness. Oh my over god! And over again. So I thank you. I love that, and that's it's one of my favorite things I've ever worked on. Actually, it was such a cool record. Yeah, That's and so next time People you chat with it. Katy Perry or Dua Lipa, let them know they're more than welcome to come and chat about Madonna on the podcast. Yes, anytime. of course. <laughs> really quick, though, I need to know, your before we go, I need to know your guys' favorite videos and favorite looks. Oh, my God, she's turning the tables on us. Oh. I just, I have to know. <laughs> like, I just can't get off the phone without knowing. Okay, um, I'll go first. My favorite Madonna video is Nothing Really Matters. Oh, I just, interesting. I think it's gorgeous from beginning to end. I love the whole concept. It really and she is. really went all in. Um, my favorite Uh-oh. Madonna look, it's kind of a toss up between, uh, you know, I lost you guys. 1989 VMA and how about the Brit Awards 1994? Yeah. Yeah. When she did a bedtime story. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Wait, which one? You uh, cut out. She, she did bedtime story at the Brit Awards, and she had the long blonde hair. Uh, and it was beyond. Yeah. Uh, so uh, those, those are my. Oh, you know what? Really quick, my secondary mm-hmm. favorite look is the <laughs> Truth or Dare in the movie, the um, with the daisies in her hair and oh, the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And see, I get what I want. <laughs> uh, the makeup during that time was just my favorite that ma- her, mm-hmm. yeah, how she did her makeup okay okay what's your favorite okay um okay well although it's obvious i would love the vogue video because i was obsessed with that i'm gonna yes. give a, i'm gonna give my second i think my second favorite madonna music video would probably be bad girl just uh. because I love the storytelling mm-hmm. and I love, I mean, David Fincher, an amazing director and he directed the shit out of that video. And I just love how, yeah, mm-hmm. that Christopher Walken moment when he, like the music drops out and he walks out from behind her and he gives her that kiss and then Beyond. disappears. And it's just so good. I love, I love everything about that. Uh, My favorite Madonna look, I'm going to do a blonde hair and a dark hair. So blonde hair oh, look, ooh. I'm going to say Madonna, if you've seen that Versace campaign where she's laying on the stairs upside down with the apple yeah, of in course. that purple dress. Lavender dress. Oh my gosh. It is probably one of my all-time favorite Madonna photos ever. I mean, she's uh, just absolutely flawlessly gorgeous in that. Flawless. Um, and then dark hair look, I would say uh, the New York premiere of the Truth or Dare movie uh, and she's with Kid and Play and it's like goth Donna and she's got those like t- raccoon eyes with the jet black straight hair. Yeah, yeah. What about the with the rhinestone bodysuit? I love that look. Remember with, that those big ge- those big gems? Oh yeah, and she had the big hair and yeah, yeah. yeah. I, oh, I think yeah, I had yeah. that poster. Yeah. Also, my I think my favorite dark hair moment was the Pepsi commercial days. Oh yeah, with, with that the, white, the, stri- the little, with the, the little blonde white streak. Oh my god, I love that. Oh, same. So good. Yeah, there's so many looks. I mean, we could probably do a whole episode just on Madonna looks. I know oh, we really can. We? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'll let you guys yeah. go, but and <laughs> yes, <laughs> the Vanity Fair photo shoot when she's like the pigtails and yes, like, yes. oh yeah, We're Madonna uh, in Wonderland. And you know that- what I just. Dis- you know what I discovered a few years ago? I was looking through a coffee table book on the history of Playboy, and all of those looks were stolen or, or you know, what? reappropriated homage, from homage, homage from uh, original 1966, Whoa, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, that was like naughty Madonna, those pigtails mm-hmm. on that little rocking horse and all. Oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> that shoot and then the Vogue shoot where she does the hippie looks. Yeah, the one that showed up in the. Oh, deeper. from deeper and yeah. deeper. Yeah, oh, her, her photo shoots oh. are fucking amazing. Oh. Amazing, okay. amazing. Okay, sorry, I could go on. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> no. We just wanted to say thanks for coming on the show. Um, this has been thank incredible, you. and we also want to thank our listeners. You know, because 
we know you have a choice in the podcast that you listen to, but we're so happy that you chose. To Thanks for to coming us. back, guys. Thanks yes. for coming back week after week. Uh, I know this is a rough time for everyone, but we're happy to, you know, send you some positive energy during this and time. yeah check out sarah hudson's instagram she's got a link to her spotify of the songs that she wrote and trust you will mm-hmm. be busy listening to that music for a long time yes honey stream and- stream stream pay that paycheck <laughs> stream, stream. Okay. so yeah you can you can find <laughs> us on apple Podcasts, spotify luminary anywhere that podcast Google are found Play. exactly and you can also Find us on Instagram at MLBC Podcast and our website, MLBCPodcast.com. Sarah, tell everyone where they can find you. Um, my Pretty much my Instagram is kind of my hub for everything. It's at Sarah with an H, Hudson XX. It's kind of where you can find me everywhere. Awesome. And yeah, you're you're in for a treat because there's a there's some she's telling some truths, ladies and okay. gentlemen. Okay, I'm a crazy bitch, and it's all on my Instagram. <laughs> and trust me, look out for that robe reveal. I cannot wait. It's coming soon. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I hope you have a great rest of the day, and you certainly brightened up my day here in New York. And- oh, thank you guys. This was so fun. And stay and safe, Stephen. You want to get us out of here (laughs) yes thanks again for joining us today on mlvc podcast everyone stay safe tony stay safe sarah stay safe thank you thank you bye guys talk to you later